Nicholas Rossi has uh, finally uh, been extradited to America where he is going to uh, stand trial for the rape charges and everything that he's been accused of over there and this entire thing is mental. Like I've said many, many times, this, this is going to be a Netflix documentary. It is. <coughs> I also have a cold because every single person has a cold. All my, all my staff are off with it as well. But I soldier on because, you know, I ain't no bitch. Uh, Nicholas Rossi, rape suspect who faked death, makes bizarre Utah court appearance after extradition from UK. Authorities spent several years trying to get him back to the United States where he is wanted in connection with the rape of a 21-year-old woman. And there he is. He's always, always wearing that oxygen mask everywhere he goes because he's trying to he's trying to do the mob boss thing where, like, you know, the very dangerous, crazy mob boss comes into court and they're in a wheelchair with the oxygen mask, like, nah, I'm too weak for prison, like, that. that's that's what he's trying to do. Basically, it's at the point where the guy's com clearly just one of the biggest compulsive liars that's ever existed in history, and, like, nobody's buying it. No one's buying it at all. Uh, a rape suspect accused of faking his own death has made a bizarre first appearance in a US court after being extradited from Scotland. But... Before we begin. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Ground News. Ground News is an app and a website that lets you see how breaking news is covered across the political spectrum in one place. With just a swipe or a click, you can quickly compare articles from thousands of publications around the world and see the ownership and factuality of those sources. In this story about Hamza Yusuf's brother-in-law allegedly being a heroin dealer, you can see about half a dozen articles that were published on it from different sources. And that coverage is mainly coming from centre or left-leaning sources, which is quite surprising if I'm being honest. But you can read the story from various political sources and then compare them to see what kind of spin they are putting on the story. And then you can compare them to try and get a better picture of what actually happened. And you can do this for any topic, for example, news on Scotland or any other subject that you're interested in. A feature that I find particularly interesting is the blind spot feed, which allows you to see news that you might have missed by showing you articles that have very little coverage on the left or on the right. Ground News is a great way to save time and stay fully informed on issues around the world by giving you all the news you could want in one place and have some awareness of where, who and how trustworthy the sources are that you get the information from. The way it compares both the right, centre and left-wing articles is the most neutral way to deal with the chaos that is today's news media. I really enjoy Ground News because it helps to get the full picture on a specific issue and it also helps to get information from sources outside of your own information bubbles. So if you want to stay fully informed on breaking news as it's happening around the world and you want to know where your news is coming from, then click the link in the description or go to ground.news slash dankula2. Subscribe via my link and you will get 30% off of unlimited access for this month only. So show them some love and click the link. Nicholas Rossi was flown out of the UK a few weeks ago after a long-running court battle during which he claimed to be a victim of mistaken identity. US officials accused him of raping a woman in 2008 and said he faked his own death, even setting up his own memorial service before fleeing to the UK. Rossi spoke, spoke in an apparent English accent at a Utah court uh, on, on Tuesday, which is really strange because apparently he's saying that he's a guy called Arthur Knight who was born in Ireland and was raised in Ireland, but he's he's got this mad accent that's all over the place, and it, like, changes every day, and all that, like, yeah. I mean, if you're going to be a compulsive liar, at least, like, try and be good at it, like, you know, uh, referring to the judge as milady. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and saying claims he wasn't giving his true name were complete hearsay. <coughs> I know that in America they call the judge your honour, uh, over here, but even if the male or female uh, over in Britain, you refer to the judge as my lord. Uh, 
He claimed he was Arthur Knight Brown uh, and spoke in a laboured, breathy tone while taking air from an oxygen mask. Rossi gave his birthday in British format with the day first followed by the month, opposite to the US standard. The 36-year-old was first arrested after someone recognised him when he was ill with COVID and taken to a hospital in Glasgow in December of 2021. A year later, Edinburgh Sheriff Court ruled his tattoos and fingerprints matched those of Rossi as featured on an Interpol wanted notice. I think he ended up on the red notice actually uh, Rossi suggested they had been done uh, by an NHS employee when he was unconscious as part of an attempt to frame him basically he's talking his tattoos he's saying that an NHS employee did the tattoos on his body while he was unconscious like I said if you're going to be a compulsive liar at least be good at it uh, and insisted he was an Irish orphan who had never been to America however it emerged he had changed his name four times in three years and concocted a number of stories to hide from justice. Four years ago, Rossi told media in the state of Rhode Island he had non-Hodgkin lymphoma and had weeks to live. An online obituary later claimed he had died on 29th of February 2020. The case played out over a number of years in Scotland, with Rossi dismissing his legal teams and representing himself as he appeared in court in a wheelchair and oxygen mask. Judge Norman McFadden said he was a dishonest and dis... And blah, blah said he was as dishonest and deceitful as he is evasive and manipulative when he approved the extradition last summer. He lost an appeal in December and was finally flown to the US at the start of this month. Rossi will, ap will next appear in court in Utah on the 26th of January and was denied bail. So that's actually just a few days from now. Although by the time this goes out, it might be on the day. So hey ho, we're finally going to figure out. But it's like... The entire story is like, obviously what happened to the women is not funny, right? But the entire thing's mental where the fingerprints match, the DNA matches, all of that stuff. And he's like, but it's not me, despite being raised in Ireland, but talking with a weird English accent. And despite having the exact same tattoos, uh, oh, but those tattoos were tattooed on me by an NHS employee while I was unconscious. Mate, <laughs> like. That's that's not even good. That's not even remotely believable. I mean, is this some utopia stuff like where the government actually does do mad shit like that because they know that no one's going to believe them? Maybe that's the case, but I have absolutely no idea why the government really wants to. If this guy was maybe some like major political dissident or something like that, then yeah, okay, I would raise a little bit of an eyebrow. But he's not. He's just some guy. He's just he's just some guy who has a very long history of just compulsive lying over and over again and deceiving everyone. Like his stepfather, uh, I think, literally called him like Demon Spawn or something like that. Like that man is the devil, just with how manipulative and basically the guy's like an absolute sociopath, just complete fucking sociopath. But like I said, very many times, this is a hundred percent definitely going to be a Netflix documentary. It absolutely is. Like all this stuff that I'm covering just now is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just what's coming out in the papers. There's all kinds of mental stuff about this story. And like his wife is like fully on his side. Despite all of this stuff coming out, his wife is still like mental I don't know what the fuck it is, right? Maybe it's I mean, given a look at her, like, she probably has never been loved by a man before. I don't mean to be horrible. I'm just... I mean, that was horrible, right? But I'm just saying, so maybe she's like, this man loves me. Yes, I believe everything he says or something. Maybe it's that. Maybe it is. I don't know. But basically, this entire story is growing arms and legs. It's fucking mental how much this guy has lied and how much he is continuing to lie, despite whether, like, we have your DNA. These look at your hand. These are your fingerprints, like, and he's he's still doubling down, like just trying to keep up the act. But yeah, he's court dates in a few days, and uh, I've got a feeling that his entire trial in the US is going to be madly entertaining.